for a lot of years I worked in construction. It was kind of like a means to an end, but I wasn't really wasn't really that happy. So you know, I really started being content and really happy in, in my work by just following like this dream and doing what I love to do. My name is Ben Wilkinson. I am a big wave surfer, a waterman, um, woodworker, artist. I grew up in North Narrabeen, which was a pretty small little working class town, the north of Sydney. One of my earliest memories is actually like body surfing with my dad and getting up on his back and like I can still kind of feel his like skin kind of moving underneath my feet. We were always best mates and then, you know, as I got older and I started surfing with him, he would go and surf as big as it kind of got. Those were the times where he surfed. You know, I love big waves and I wanted to prove myself. Like I was dreaming of like being in the eddy when I was a kid and told my parents like long before, when I'm 16, I'm going to Hawaii. Come on, girl. Moving here to Hawaii, there's, there's, there's a bunch of construction work and that's kind of, you know, I just kept on doing what I knew. It was just surviving. It wasn't really like, doing what I loved and you know like I was doing the surfing the surfing part like surfing big waves like that's something that I love but on the other front I, I was kind of like I wasn't really wasn't really that happy I was always always dreamed of working with like slab timbers live edge timbers and luckily enough one of my friends dads from my canoe club he said oh one of my friends has a slab he doesn't want so we went up there and, and got the slab and like that was like the start of creating my first piece in Hawaii and I've still got that piece today. It's like it's one of my favorite pieces. This is hard work but I still I've, I've created myself a little bit of freedom where I get to you know be my own boss and work my own hours and create my own art. So yeah it's been a it's been a rad journey. And what about with the surfboards? How did you get into making those? A good friend of mine, Smitty from Tahiti, he introduced me to my landlord where I built this shop on his property and me and him have kind of been working together on various um, boards and I've been giving him a hand. My initial job was working for him here, building like decks and, and remodeling his kitchens and stuff like that. So he's kind of helped me land on my feet and, and we've just we've retained a really good relationship. Yeah, I like it. He's kind of like a mentor, a brother, a kind of father to me. Again, it's easy to cut it out. You can't add it on. He's one of the main reasons why I've been able to keep my feet grounded here in Hawaii. This board's designed to be surfed, but it's also designed to turn heads, get people thinking outside of the box. Big wave surfing is progressing really, really fast. You know, Albie's riding a pretty small board at George. I think the biggest board he has is 8.8, you know, because he does take off under the lip. And, you know, some people will say, oh, he just surfs the West Bowl or whatever, but he can surf anywhere. He just chooses to surf that part because he wants to get barreled, you know? Like, big wave surfing could progress so much further if everyone kind of brought down their boards. But it's kind of hard because then you've got other guys out there on massive boards getting waves that you could be getting or you should be getting. But for me, it's not really about like how many waves, it's kind of like where you get them from and how it feels. Like if you get a big one from under the hook and you take off late and you put it all together and, and you make it, it's, it's, it means, it just feels much better and it means much more than just like getting a big wave, having a roll in and going on a big board like to the shoulder. Like for me, like big wave surfing is all about is actually like surfing the wave, you know, not just like trying to like get to safety on a big board. It's really like, you know, getting in the pit and like kind of knifing it and, and you know, I don't know, just that feeling is insane. I think that my key to happiness would have to be to really do what you want to do and, and you know, try not to waste too much time, um, you know, doing stuff that you don't want to do. 